Hi. We decided to make the set of Willy Wonka for a play, and we had some unique problems that we had to deal with. We had to make things pretty compact because our stage isn't very big and our storage areas aren't very big. So today I want to show you some of the things that we've done to create our set and make um, things work for the set of Willy Wonka. This is our Wonka Vader, and we already had this pagoda that we, my sons had made several years ago. And we decided to use it for the Wonka Vader and put, we put it on a dolly, a cart that had wheels so that it could be turned. And then we set a bench inside of it so that Willy Wonka, Grandpa Joe, and Charlie would sit inside of it while the Oompa Loompas wheeled it around on stage and twirled it around. Worked really well. We added some stripes. The things that we've got here, this is PVC cut in half. This is a road cone, a very small one. And then on top is a bowl, and the very top is part of a light fixture. So we were using and recycling things that normally we wouldn't be able to use. We have a unique problem for the tube that Augustus Gloop has to go up into after he falls into the Chocolate River. So what we decided to do was we got this tubing from a, a plumbing supply place, ductwork supply place, and we laid, or stapled it to a board. And the board is just a painted black and has another smaller board attached to it that's very long so that it can be held like a handle. And then what we did was staple fabric over it. So the per one person stands behind it holding the pole up while another person gets inside the tube and stands there during the entire scene. Then when Augustus falls in the river, they start wiggling a lot and finally we just, they just make a, a motion upward until Augustus is out of the tube. It worked really, really well. It looked like the tube went straight into the wall from where we were standing. Held up really well, but you do have to be a bit careful with it so that it doesn't rip and tear. A rock wall back here, there are just some flats. So we, what we've done is we've taken newspaper, wadded it up and taken double layers of flat newspaper and stapled it down over the wad of newspaper. Then we painted it all to create our rocks. This was a really inexpensive way of doing it, but you had to be very careful with it so it didn't tear. And it, from a distance, it looked amazing. It really looked like a rock wall. And it was very lightweight. We were able to just lean it up against the back wall of the stage, and it made a perfect background for our rock wall. And the next thing we did was we used brown satin for our river. Brown satin lays perfectly. We stapled it on just like we did with these, and then we were able to drape it really well across the stage. We left a blank area back here where Augustus, as he's up here on the platform, was able to pretend like he's drinking or taking the um, chocolate river. And as he did, he fell in, and we had a cup of pudding backstage for him to actually put it all over his face and look really good at one point before, um, before he fell into the river. The other thing we used to get a lot of greenery on stage was green plastic tablecloths. These work really well to get a lot of color on the stage so that you can be able to get the colors you need without a lot of work and it doesn't cost a lot of money. So this is the set for Willy Wonka. We actually, um, for one of the mushrooms, we saw this on the original movie, they had some mushrooms that had whipped cream in them. And so what we did was we actually did paper mache. We formed it out of chicken wire first. We formed a mushroom. And then we did paper mache all over the mushroom. And we covered it in a glue-like solution. We used Elmer's glue with water to help kind of seal the paper mache and then paint it after that so we didn't use so much paint and have it absorb in. So we painted it. And then afterwards, we got a lot of the, this is actually insulation. And it's not moving anywhere. Insulation foam, so it looks like whipped cream. But the cool part was we cut out a piece right here where we could put a tub of whipped cream every night. Everybody had so much fun taking in handfuls of whipped cream into their mouths. In fact, our stage crew liked to eat it afterwards. So for the lollipops, we actually went and got some paper plates. And we went and got some paint dowels from the local hardware store. And what we did was we took the two paper plates and put them together and actually stapled them onto the dowel. The and then we stapled them together 
like this. And then after that, we actually painted the paper plates to look like a lollipop, and then we took cellophane and wrapped it around it. And this is how the lollipops turned out. These were like, uh, easy to do because These they already had the paper plates, plates that, that looked, looked like just this. like that. So it made it really simple. This was yep. super cheap, and the hardware store was willing to donate the supplies to us for the paint paddles. So the cost on these was very, very minimal, and we were able to get a lot of bang for our buck. Also, a nice tip for you people who are looking for set for plays, it's a good idea to go around and see which local businesses will sponsor you, because in all honesty, you don't know how willing they are to sponsor you, and most of the time they're willing to. And then you can just put their name in the program at the end, saying yep. how much they helped you with the play. And tickets? The golden tickets. I was actually the mastermind behind all of these. So um, originally we had decided that we were going to try some cardstock, and we found this gold cardstock paper, but the problem with it was that it wouldn't go through the printers. So instead we ended up finding the original print of what the Willy Wonka ticket said, and we made our own tickets. But what we did was we actually cut them out, and then we went and spray painted them gold. But it was a light mist so that the, uh, so that the ink didn't run. And they, they printed it with a really bold print yes, so that it, it has showed to be through, very bold. Showed through the mist of gold paint that they sprayed over it. If you can it actually, worked really well. If you look, you can actually see the writing. So we knew that we needed to have fast ways to get things on and off stage that didn't take up a lot of space in the background, just in the back in the, where we keep things. So we made a whole bunch of mushrooms. That was one of the first things we did out of paper mache and chicken wire, forming the chicken wire frame first and then paper mache it. Then we painted it. And the painting was really easy. We just used uh, regular latex paint on these. But then for the spots on it, what we did was we cut, we took a paper cap and we cut out the bottom of the end of it, stuck it over here and just spray painted white all over it. That made easy round spots that were all the same and perfect shaped and we didn't have to worry about trying to paint them all on individually. The, another thing that we did, because we wanted them to be able to eat the different types of things in the room, was we took some cookies and we cut off some ice cream cones so that they were a little bit shorter and used a glue gun and glued these together. Now they couldn't eat the whole thing, but they could eat parts of it and it looked really good on stage. And we also put these inside of them so that they could actually the grab and something and it's, it was like a, a cookie ball kind of a thing inside of them so that they could take things off of that. So what I did was we got all of these things done first. We had our lollipops, our mushrooms, and our, our little flower things here. And what we did was we took a board, a flat board, wooden board, and we got some of this floral foam. You need the right kind. There's stuff that's for wet floral foam and dry floral foam. And if you want it to hold up, you need the dry floral foam. And we took the glue gun and glued those onto the board in the position that we wanted our things to stay. Not where the mushroom was. We saved that spot for flat, a flat area. And we left the paper mache a little bit open for that with the wire sticking out with our chicken wire so that we could use a staple gun and staple that over. The first thing we did, okay, glue gun down this, the dry foam. Then we got some material that was kind of stretchy, green material. We wadded up newspaper around the foam so that it would give us some dimension and height. And then we stretched this over all of it and stapled it underneath onto the board. You can glue gun it too if that works better for you and stretched it just as tight as we could so that it would make bumps and valleys. And then we put our mushroom on, stapled it down. We had to use screws and washers in some places where on the big mushroom so that it wouldn't wobble too much. But even with this, even though it wobbles, it still is there to stay. It's not gonna go anywhere. The next thing we did was we put, I took uh, an old stem from a flower with leaves, glued our cups onto it, stuck that in our floral foam, which is right here, and then we also stuck our suckers into the floral foam so that they stay in place. I did have to cut a hole in the material first because the material, you can't really puncture through it. But this was great because even if, if they bumped it and stuff or broke the floral foam, you could stick it in another spot in the floral foam later on. Then we took regular florals and decorated all the way around everything, you know, making it so that you could cover up 
the bottoms of things, turned out great. It looked really nice off stage, and we used it for several scenes in the play in different places, with the gobstopper machine, um, and then in the candy room. 